what's up everyone I uh, hope you're all having a Merry Christmas hopefully I'll get this video out in time uh, I've been wanting to do this video for a little while so let me introduce you to the trigger lineup I'm sure you're familiar with this name and triggers the Geisleys. Uh this is the G2S it's supposed to have a 4.5 trigger pull uh, it's a dual stage trigger rather two stage um, this is also a Geisley SSAE this one is supposed to be 3.5 pound trigger pull and uh, also a two-stage trigger this is a standard comes with every single AR ever mil spec trigger and I'm not sure if we're gonna do much comparison with this one or not we might um, this one here is a Palmetto State Armory uh, two-stage nickel boron trigger and I don't even know what the actual poundage is supposed to be on that one but we're definitely gonna find out okay so that's the lineup Let's go ahead and just get right into this and go ahead and install the first trigger into the receiver and see how it does. We're at about eight, just under eight and four thirty seconds. So let's release slowly, see how we do. Still releasing carefully, carefully. All right, right about there. So we're just over eight and looks like 11.30 seconds, right around 11.30 seconds. Uh, the camera isn't quite seeing what my eye is. Um, but yeah, uh, by eye, we're at about eight and 11.30 seconds right now. All right, so I did the PSA single stage off camera three times just to be sure because it was hard to watch the camera and the rule at the same time. Uh, and I got a consistent result of about 730 seconds for the single stage mil spec trigger. Okay, so I know how judgmental you internet peoples can be sometimes. But uh, I'm an analog man living in a digital world. This is the scale I'm going to be using to measure the poundage of the trigger pull. And I've used this thing to check triggers for 10 years and it's done a pretty good job. So I like it. So get over it. Okay, let's get started. All right, the one disadvantage is you don't get as many increments as you'd get with a digital scale. So, all right, here goes PSA single stage. All right, let's see how she does. Six pounds, six and a half. And it went just at about 6.6, 6.7-ish. Let's give it another go. All right, let me try to twist it so you can see it here. All right, back up to six pounds. Six and a half. Uh, about 6.75-ish. And let's do one more. All right. So we've got five pounds, six pounds, six and a half, about 6.6 .6 that time. Okay, trigger number two. This is the PSA two stage nickel boron trigger assembly. All right, this is our first entry level into the aftermarket for two stage triggers. Um, let's go ahead and attempt the reset on this one. All right, you guys might not be able to see it, but we're starting at about eight, and I would say 3.30 seconds for this one. This time, let's let the stone give us an idea. How far are we gonna push it? All right, so we went from eight and three to eight and 13 that's 10 10 30 seconds wow that's uh, a lot further than i thought it was going to be that's actually a longer reset than we had on the single stage trigger all right i gotta admit i'm a little stunned here i, I did uh several variations with the stone without the stone to be sure that that wasn't uh that straight edge there wasn't messing up my results in comparison to my just kind of trying to hold it square for the previous test for the single stage but uh I'm, I'm a little stunned. That thing has at least a, a three 30 seconds longer reset than our standard mil spec trigger. Uh, that really wasn't a result I was expecting. 
Anyways, let's go ahead and see how many pounds it is to pull it. Okay, here we go with uh, PSA two-stage nickel boron. See how this guy does. All right, we're at two pounds. Three pounds. 3.5. Four. 4.5. So just at 4.5, we had a pretty clean break. Let's go ahead and do it again. All right, so three... Four, four point five. Oh, just or I mean, just over four point five that time. So definitely improved on trigger pull, <clears throat> even if we went backwards on trigger reset. So we're at four, four point five. Just, just I would call it a four point six. For your information in this testing. I will not be using any of the lube that comes with the Geisley trigger. I just, uh, I don't think it's fair to go side by side with the other ones that have no lube. Although it is nice to note, Geisley will put in their own uh, trigger lube right in the package. <clears throat> okay, so the Geisley G2S. All right, again, we're starting at about eight, eight and six, 30 seconds. All right, yeah, so 8 and 12 30 seconds. So yeah, we got a 6 30 second reset on the Geisley G2S. And here we go with the Geisley uh, G2S. Let's see here. All right, we're at 2, 3. Um, okay, that was the first stage. I actually felt it that time. So we're at 3 and a half. Four, four and a half, almost four and a half. Oh yeah, almost dead on four and a half. Okay, so interesting test so far, and uh, now to the piece de la resistance, the uh, the Geisley SSAE, uh, the enhanced uh, two stage trigger by Geisley. I've been uh, wanting to get this trigger for quite some time, and I finally found it on sale. Um, what I find interesting is you look at the packaging on this one versus their uh, lesser model, the uh, G2S. And this looks so humble. I mean, and uh, uh, but this should be our top performer. Let's go ahead and install it and find out. We're starting at about 8 and 5, 30 seconds. Let's go. All right, I would say eight and 11, 30 seconds. So we're looking at a six, a six 30 second reset. Um, SSAE uh, trigger pull poundage. So let's see what we're working with. This should be the lightest one. This one's rated by Geisley at 3.5 pounds. All right, there's two and there's, okay, I just felt the first stage complete and there's, Two and a half. There's three. Oh, it did it didn't even go to 3.5. That was about three and a quarter. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> All right, let's give that a try again. All right, so. Oh, come on, don't go spinning on me. All right, so there's two. Two and a half. Yeah, and I, I felt that first stage go. And Three. Oh, yeah, it's only going a little over. It's only going like 3.2, uh, three and a quarter. Um, yeah, let me do one more just to be sure. This is actually lighter than their rating. Um, wow. I mean, I don't know if you'd get light strikes with that or not, but that is that is impressive right there. That is truly impressive. Let me see if I can get this square again for you. All right, so there's two. Two and a half, and I just felt the first stage complete. Consistently, same same place. All right, two and a half, three. Oh, I know you guys can't see it. Let me try to spin it a little. Oh, shoot, it went off. Yeah, it was just over three. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys could see that from that angle, but wow, impressive. 
Let's go ahead and try to summarize this data. Um, I tested these in order from cheapest to most expensive, and for the most part, the performance was as expected in terms of you get what you pay for. Now, I got them all on a Thanksgiving sale, you know, Black Friday sale at Palmetto State Armory, and uh, if you stick around to the end, I got a little more information about Palmetto State Armory that uh, you may want to hear. Um, with that said, the, uh, the actual numbers, the single stage control, basically the single stage mil spec trigger, had a 6.7 pound trigger pull. So almost seven pounds, and it had a 730 seconds reset. So that was kind of our uh, initial, what you would expect from pretty much any average uh, AR-15 with a standard trigger. All right, our second trigger, the PSA two-stage nickel boron. All right, um, you know, the actual trigger pull on it wasn't too bad. At a 4.6 was about the average that I would have given it. And uh, the reset on it, honestly, though, was the biggest surprise for me of the entire lineup and the testing that I just did. Because at 10.30 seconds, I mean, that's a full 3.30 seconds longer reset than the uh, mil spec uh, control. I, I think that is a little little horrendous, to be honest with you. Um, now, granted, the mil spec one felt a little bit gritty, uh, and the nickel boron, admittedly, was a bit smoother. And I did not lubricate any of these, so they're straight out of the packages uh, for testing. The uh, now on to the actually higher end ones, the uh, G2S Geisley two stage. Um, bo both the Geisleys had really snug pins, almost uncomfortably snug. <laughs> Uh, they did install okay, but man, they were tight. Uh, you're definitely not going to have to worry about those walking on you, at least not in the receiver that I used. So the G2S uh, had a very smooth trigger pull, very nice, uh, and, a, and a very consistent 4.5 pounds on the nubbin, which is what they rated that trigger at. So, I mean, Geisley's done a great job of putting out exactly what they tell you they're putting out. Um... If I didn't already say so, it had a 6 30 seconds reset, which is one 30 second better than our, our control, and uh, you know a full 4 30 seconds better than the PSA two-stage nickel boron. Now, uh, the uh, finale, if you will, the by far the most expensive trigger, but I can see why it's more expensive. I mean, uh, if you want a two-stage trigger non-adjustable with a fabulous trigger uh i mean that that's that's got to be recommended and i trust me i didn't get any kickback <laughs> from geisley for any of this um but uh, also had those you know super tight pins but very smooth trigger pull the same exact 630 seconds reset as the g2s uh, but the actual trigger pull was slightly lighter than what they advertise it to be at 3.5 pounds um, it was actually coming up on average a 3.3. And, and the consistency with which that you could feel that first stage uh, um, setting itself up to prepare for the second stage was pretty impressive, i, I got to say. That one was the most difficult to install. I definitely don't recommend someone that is not into gunsmithing installing that uh, unless you are very mechanically minded because uh, it is definitely a different design than the other guys Lee. Uh, with that said, if you stuck with me this long, I mean this is my preliminary test uh, of all these triggers. Obviously this wasn't field testing, so I don't know if any one of these would have light strikes on certain types of primers versus others. Um, if you try to just sit there and rip them fast uh, side by side, um, I I'm inclined to believe the two guys Lee's would do the best, but you know we'll have to see. Maybe I'll do that test later on. I'm definitely going to keep that SSAE for me. That is going on my 6.5 Grendel, and I'm looking forward to putting it on there. Um, back to my uh, little bit of a hint there about PSA. Uh, you know, as most of you know, I live in upstate New York, and uh, I was born in New York, and uh, it's been, you know, where I've lived. It's where my family connections are. It's where my friends are. I don't want to stay in New York because the politics are really terrible. And to be honest with you, I hate New York in terms of its politics. I really do. But with that said, it really frustrates me when companies that are outside of New York, uh, firearms-related companies, won't do business with New York on things that are legal for us to, to have and use. Uh, it's almost like they want to punish us New Yorkers because 
the, the downstate elected politicians that represent us. It's not our fault, Palmetto State Armory. It's not our fault. I had to pay a uh, normal price on these, which I do for most things, but I also had to pay taxes. I'm a New York State reseller and an FFL and a gunsmith, and uh, you know I have all of my licensing, all of it. And uh, most businesses that I've dealt with are, are willing to sell me things that I intend to resell uh, without charging me the initial sales tax from them because it's going to be taxed again on its way out away from my shop. Palmetto State, their uh, dealer sales people would not take my phone calls, would not respond to my emails, and they seem to just refuse to deal with me, and I think it's because I'm a New Yorker. Uh, it's pretty sad. It sucks. I want to move out. I will move out at some point, but we're, we're not in a financial position to do that right now. So it is what it is, but as far as this lineup goes, um, this is fun. I think I'm going to have to do more testing. I definitely have to do more testing, I think, uh, maybe swipping, switching out Hammer Springs and seeing uh, what the result might be later on. Um, I'm definitely going to come back to this. We'll see how it goes. I'll check you guys later. Merry Christmas.